In this video, we'll look at how to reduce the risks of SQL injection attacks using prepared statements. So what we previously did was we actually directly inserted the user's input into our SQL code. And we want to separate the user's input. We want to separate the SQL code from the user's input using prepared statements. And to do that, I've just prepared some comments into what we plan to do in this video and the comments just follow a, a five step, uh, uh, yeah, five steps basically. So we'll start off by preparing the SQL statement using a prepared statement and we can use the prepare function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line and we will comment this out and I'll paste it in here and just show you how we can transform this into a prepared statement. So instead of directly inserting the user's input into our SQL code, we will replace that with question marks. These will hold as placeholders that we will then replace with actual user input. Next, we want to use the prepare function by uh, passing in our basically connection and the query in the same way that we did previously, but we are using the prepare function instead, and we want to put that into the result. So at this point, uh, sorry, not result, we put that in as a statement, because this will return a statement as an object that we will then use to bind those question marks with our actual user input using the bind param function. But at this point, we no longer need this old code. So I'm just going to delete it to show more clarity into what we are doing. Next, we will bind these values, the values of the username and the password to the placeholders that we have in our prepared statements to these. So we will use the bind param function. And we will be passing in our statement as argument. The next argument that we want to pass in would be the data types. And I'll talk about this, the data types of the username. So the username was just basically a string. And the second and the, th and the other value that we want to bind into the place or the question marks was the password and the data type of the password was also a string. So we just include SS for demonstrating that both of these will be strings. <clears throat> Next, we want to execute the statement using the statement execute function. And we just need to pass in our statement like this. Next, we want to get the result. Um, so what we do is we will get the results using the get results function. We will pass in our statement and return the result into a variable called result. Sorry, I forgot to put a dollar sign to indicate this is a PHP variable. And we, this part really remains the same. The last thing we want to do is we want to close our statement using the statement close function and pass in our statement and that's it. So when I save, the functionality wise is not going to change. We've just made this slightly better such that we reduce the risks of SQL injections, uh, injection attacks using the prepared statement. But in functionality wise, it doesn't change, but let's give it a test anyway. So let's give a, a valid user and it works pretty much the same. But if I give in an incorrect password, it just, yeah. So functionality wise, it works pretty much the same. We've just used prepared statements to separate users input from uh, direct insertion into the SQL code. And that way we reduce the risks of SQL injection attacks. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.